You don't care about the aqidah. You could be Rafi, Sufi, grave worshipping, you know, grave building, shrine, circumambulating individual. They don't care about any of that, Ikhwan al-Muslimin. So there are many from the people of knowledge who have criticized Ikhwan al-Muslimin in this affair. Meaning, in the affair of their absence of giving concern and zeal and effort in the field of da'wah to the tawheed of Allah, to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and sincerely and truly guiding their worship or directing their worship to him. And likewise, because of their, because of their absence of zeal and concern to that which the ignorant ones have innovated of devotion and connecting themselves to the deceased in their graves and seeking rescue with them and making vows to them and sacrificing animals to them. All of this which constitutes major shirk. And likewise, Ikhwan al-Muslimin have been criticized due to their absence of giving importance to the sunnah and in following the sunnah and giving importance to the hadith, to the noble hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and that which the salaf were upon in their understanding or in their sharia rulings. So there are many affairs, Sheikh bin Baz continues, so there are many affairs that I have heard about Ikhwan al-Muslimin for which they are criticized. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides them. That is the end of the answer of Sheikh bin Baz. In the rest of the, of the next two pages of the footnotes, Sheikh Jamal al-Harithi, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but Sheikh Jamal al-Harithi mentions that there was an individual who came along and that he tried to pick fault with the answer of Sheikh bin Baz regarding Ikhwan al-Muslimin. And this was due to his lack of manners and etiquette with the scholar and likewise lying. So basically, without going in, without reading it point by point. So this individual comes along and he says to Sheikh bin Baz that I, he, he, he contacts Sheikh bin Baz and he says that I love you and I honor you and I, hope, and I love you for Allah's sake. However, I have a criticism. He said that I read today something that has been written, ascribed to you that you said about Ikhwan al-Muslimin. That someone wrote this and, you know, that they, that they transcribe what you wrote and he claims that this is what you've said. And that you criticize Ikhwan al-Muslimin that they participate or they, or they participate in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the birthday of the Prophet sallallahu and that they have many innovations with them and so on and so forth. So he said, but I, I'm a person who worked with Ikhwan al-Muslimin for many years in Egypt with them. And I don't recognize any of these things that you've said. And I don't see that they have any bid'ah with them. So he said to the sheikh at the end, so he said, I'm asking you, O sheikh, that you should retract what you've said about Ikhwan al-Muslimi. But anyway, putting his bad manners and his lack of research and putting his own opinion above the clear words of Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Baz Sheikh bin Baz nevertheless responded to him he said that what I have narrated to you basically what I have narrated to you is that which the which a group of the scholars have written about Ikhwan al-Muslimin that they don't have Nishat, that they don't have eagerness 
or zeal in warning against shirk and that which is related to it. They don't warn against the people who go to the graves. They don't have zeal in this field. He said, nevertheless, this is something that, you, that, that is seen in their books and in their lives and that which is known about them. So you should go back and go and read about what is written. And that was the end of the brief response of Sheikh bin Baz. And this shows actually the methodology, the reason why I've, I've decided to just mention this to you briefly. It's because actually, this is a trait of all of Ahlul Bid'ah when you refute them. So when you say to the people, like we've sat here now, we've said all what we've said, and we did it previously with the uh, Ikhwan al Muslimin, and we did it with Jamaat al Tabligh, and we did it with Sayyid Qutb, and we did it now with Hassan al Banna, and we did it with many of their followers that we quote the page number, the date, what they've said about themselves. Uh, on occasions, we've even mentioned the publisher of the book. Then you find a miskin from amongst them who doesn't know anything. He doesn't know his right foot from his left foot. And he'll turn up. And with this audacity, I mean, forget us. They'll do it to Sheikh bin Baz. With all of the proofs and evidences that we have against Ikhwan al-Muslimin, he tries to throw, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, a red herring. You know, just try to throw something into the mix to throw doubts into the hearts of the people. Oh, Sheikh, but I spent years with them. I didn't see a single bid'ah. Were you deaf and blindfolded? Or you don't know bid'ah from sunnah? What is it that prevented you? That you're in Egypt, you don't see the graves? You don't see the hundreds and thousands of people that visit the graves of al-Badawi? You don't know about the various Gnostic, Sufi, mystic sects that exist in Egypt, yet the whole call of Ikhwan al-Muslimin is about replacing the ruler and replacing the government. So the Sheikh pointed out something that is obvious, besides the fact that what we already know about Hassan al-Banna anyway, that he was from the Mufawwidah, and he was a Quburi, and he celebrated the birthday of the Prophet sallallahu and all of the other innovations that he had. And likewise, Sayyid Qutb, these are the figureheads of Ikhwan al-Muslimin. So is al-Qardawi with all of his bid'ah that we've already mentioned and possibly more to mention in the future. Insha'Allah. So now this individual comes along, and I've had it actually, uh, after the booklet that I wrote on Jamaat al-Tabligh. So I made it brief because I know that people aren't big readers these days. But it was quoted, you know, line, paragraph, page, with photocopies, actually. I included images of their own statements taken from their own works. And I put, you know, a, a link where they can download for Dalul A'mal their own translation into English. And I said, here's the page number. So now I get responses on my website. You're a liar. <laughs> I, okay. What makes me a liar? Because I know Jamaat al tabligh and they don't say what you're saying. I said, I'm not saying it. It's from their book. They said this. It is their fatwa. It is their fatawa, their writings, their book, their translation, and here's the edition number that I took it from. And here's the photocopy of it as well on the website and even in the book that we published. Then every so often, a few months later, you'll get another one. I visited Rawand and I spoke to the guy who calls the Adhan and he said, all of this is lies and no, we don't do that. So you're a liar. This is what they do. And this is exactly what this individual has done to Sheikh bin Baz. Oh, Sheikh, all of what you've said, I love you. So I have to predicate it there just to soften the blow in the end. I love you and, you know, I, I, I hold you in great esteem, but... Uh, I know Ikhwan al-Muslimin and I've visited Egypt and I've worked with them and for many, many years and I've never seen a single bid'ah. But you said, he said, I didn't see and I do not know any of these affairs that you have mentioned from them. And I did not see from them 
I did not see from them any single bid'ah. So now, if a lot of people start saying this, then the Amatun now start believing it. Well, because, you know, who's going to go back to the origin of the books? That's why it's important sometimes in our writings and even in some of our durus, that occasionally we actually give a quick reference. So now, you can stop the recording there and you can take that reference down, write it down and go and look for the book of Hassan al-Banna and see whether we are lying or whether what he said is what we actually ascribe to him. So then he has the audacity to say at the end, he goes, for this reason, I wish for you, O noble sheikh, that you correct this speech of yours. It's not him who has to correct. It is you, ya akhi. It is you that needs to fear Allah. That you need to stop lying. That you went to Egypt for all of those years, you didn't see a single bid'ah from Ikhwan al-Muslimin. So that's a lie. Right? What you ascribe to the Shaykh is a lie anyway, because the Shaykh didn't mention the Mawlid in his answer anyway. Even though it's true that they don't, they don't forbid things like this, because their affair is about economics, you know, social justice, and the kursi. And that's all that they deal with. They don't care about the aqidah. You could be Rafidi, Sufi, grave worshipping, you know, grave building, shrine, tawafing, if there is such a word, circumambulating individual. They don't care about any of that, Ikhwan al-Muslimin, because what they're concerned about is, as they have said, and maybe either we've covered it or we're going to cover it, you know, what they're concerned about is, as they say, that you look at the shirk al qubur you look at the shirk of the qubur we look at the shirk of the qusur. You look at the shirk of the graves and we look at the shirk of the palaces. No, you don't look at the shirk of the palaces. You look at the decoration of the palaces and you look at the seats and the thrones in the palaces because you want them. And that's why the Khawarij throughout history have never achieved anything. Ikhwan al-Muslimin since the 1920s has achieved nothing. Not a state, not a nation, nothing. Why? Because this da'wah that is not built upon tawheed will never succeed. Ain't has never succeeded. A da'wah that is not based upon kitab and sunnah and the manhaj of the salaf is a da'wah that will not succeed. So it is better to have a sinful ruler who is a Muslim. A sinful ruler who is a Muslim. A tyrannical ruler who is a Muslim. But he's a Muslim. He's better than having these people cause their insurgencies and their insurrections in the Muslim lands. So alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us some level of insight into understanding these amur that we understand that we are living in difficult times. We know that in some of the countries it is difficult. There can be throughout history up until the present day rulers who are sinful, who are transgressors. Some of them are righteous. Some of them are pious. Some of them are strong. Some of them are weak. That's the nature of humanity. Our job and our duty towards the Muslim rulers is that we make dua for them and not against them. We advise them for their benefit and not for our benefit, not so that we can be seen as, you know, some people of importance because I went to the member and I advised him. No, you want to advise the ruler, write to him privately. Use gentle words and make plentiful dua for him. Save a dua in your night prayers for the Muslim rulers because in the strength of the Muslim rulers, there is strength for the ummah. 